was a biker and I drove his motorcycle very fast. Drove a big chai pot with a gang color jacket and I ran down citizens for laughs. He had an old lady named Petula who packed an automatic 45 gun. They had just come up from California where they'd shot six cops for fun. Jake thought it was the best there was He's down the interstate he saw. Till the day he tangled with the county sheriff who they all call 104. Out of his favorite drug, you know, the one called Amphetamine. So he sauntered up to Petula and he said, Say, baby, let's split. There's a little gas station on down the road that might be fun to hit. So they drove up to the station and they both jumped off of Jake's ride. They were up to the original Jake's decision as they both sauntered inside. The attendant, he was an old man, and you know, he didn't think it very funny. Out that great big gun said, Honey, give me all your money. Well, the old man opened up the cash drawer and Jake grabbed the money and ran. With the two out the door to the big chop pile that was parked on the center kickstand. Then they headed out for the four lane and they thought it was lots of fun. With Jake on his hog, with the two to the dog, with the automatic 45 gun. Jake, he thought it was the best there was, was down the interstate he saw. Till the day he tangled with the county sheriff. Y'all call 104. The old man didn't think it very humorous, and you know he didn't like to get sassed. Cause just that moment he had a cup of coffee with a cop named Pendergrass. But the old man had a lot of sense, and he knew just exactly what to do. He dropped a dime in the phone till they got the dial tone, and they talked to Operator 42. Operator 42, she was the best, and she gave out the description. Oh, Jake the maggot with the gang color jacket and Petula with the 45 gun. Now it just so happens that Jake, he was headed for 522. Well, 104 was popped in the shade, thinking, baby, I'm waiting for you. Jake laughed and thought he had it made. But you should have seen a look in his eyes When outside Monroe on 522 You know we got one hell of a surprise Cause Night Dreams Talk Radio After Dark Wants to give a big shout out To all the truckers That listen to our show Night Dreams Talk Radio Network Brings you the World Paranormal News with James Creechbaum. Now, the latest news. I'm James Creechbaum with the Paranormal and World Changes News. While the Space Force is preparing for everything, even interplanetary operations as it sets up. Now, the Space Force is facing some of its most daunting existential questions as it prepares to present to Congress its plan for how it will become the next military service. And the Air Force Secretary must deliver the plan to Congress by February 1st. Also in the news, a meteor fireball lights up the night sky over Poznan, Poland. Now the bright light believed to be a meteor has been captured flashing across the sky in the city of Poznan, Poland. There are multiple uh, points of view of this on video throughout the uh, Internet. Also in the news, a 3.3 magnitude earthquake shakes northern New York. The uh, country the uh, country residents react to a 3.3 magnitude earthquake, and the earthquake was centered near Ormstown, Canada, just over the border some ways. And speaking of earthquakes, also a magnitude 4.0 earthquake strikes Quebec. And Ontario, and Eastern Ontario, and uh, also, and that was this morning around 8.30. Now, for, officials say there was no reports of damage with Monday's early morning quake in southwestern Quebec. Also in the news, uh, the Voyager, scientists in Salutis may harbor life. Now, that's 
the uh, scientific uh, helm of NASA, one of the head scientists there, uh, he says the historic Voyager missions has suggested that we revisit Saturn's icy moon, for he feels there will be life detected there in some form. Also in the news, declassified file sheds light on Soviet-era UFO. Now, a recently declassified CIA intelligence report has helped to shed new light on a 50-year-old UFO mystery. In the summer of 1973, an unspecified witness observed an unidentified sharp, bright green circular object or mass in the sky above an experimental Soviet missile range in present-day Kazakhstan. Next news break, top of the hour. Good evening, or morning, depending on your time zone. From the Pacific to the Atlantic to you worldwide, get yourself a cup of java and find a comfy, easy chair. Ready for Gary and his guest on Night Dreams Talk Radio, After Dark. And now... Here's Gary. Well, here I am. And, well, we're getting snow down at the compound here tonight. Uh, I don't know how deep it's going to get, but we got about three inches already. Coming down for the last couple of hours, really heavy down at the compound. Uh, one thing I hate more than anything is when it freezes and then there's snow. James, how are you doing? Oh, not bad. Not bad. It's, it's back to fall weather today, so trying to get accolated into 40 degrees instead of 70. Yeah, but you had then didn't you have like a big windstorm or a big wind come through after you had your 70 degree weather? Yeah, it went to like 55 60 but 40 50 mile an hour winds it was horrendous. Yeah, yeah, I keep saying earth changes it's going on. Look what's happening in the Philippines. You know, 2 days ago that volcano going off and they're not the only place it's a volcano that went off at. No, and I'll touch on a little bit in the news report, but there's three places around the globe that volcanoes are erupting. Yeah, that's scary, too. This one here, they, they it went off about two years ago, and then the one in the Philippines, then it all of a sudden just went off. At this point, I guess there's nobody, thank God, it, it, it perished of it, you know, because of it. Right, and then there's that one in New Zealand, and then I can tell you something else that's really on the rise that I've noticed because, you know, I study all this and research, is earthquakes. Just within the last couple of days, earthquakes all over from Canada to New York to uh, Alaska, all over the country. Yeah, and California had a, a minor one, around 3.3. 3. Uh, it, it's weird. A lot of strange things are going on. And, you know, it's a lot of things that it can affect it. Do you know, a lot of people don't realize, the moon just doesn't, you know, have control of our tides and stuff like that. Do you realize the moon, well, keeps us from going into our planet, you know, rotating. So our planet could just like this. And the moon is slowly moving away from the earth. And at one point, it's going to be far enough away from the earth. Who knows where our magnet field is going to go, which, you know, what, you know, like uh, where we're at in the United States could be like where the North Pole is because the earth could change on its axis because of the moon. Yeah, and you know, another thing I report on my, one of my news uh, breaks the other night or last week is the Earth's rotation slowing down, too. Now, it's very it's very subtle, but since a few million years ago, we've lost like two hours to a day. So what's that? Or we've gained two hours to a day because it's slowing down. So, yeah, again, it's slow, but all these things add up. And the moon, think of it like this. The moon can control the tides, and that's a lot. So I hear a lot of people, too, they ask, well, can the moon affect people? Well, we're 70% water, and it affects the tides, so the odds are, yeah, it could affect your moods, I would say. Or maybe you have, well, maybe you have to go potty faster. I don't know. <laughs> but, you know, it, it's not that. Just think of about a huge asteroid slamming in the moon and then pushing the uh, moon out of its uh, orbit around Earth. Yeah, these are all, and, and like that... Um, the other theory there with that planet Nerubu or the planet X. Planet, you can call it, if you can't pronounce it like I do, the planet X. <laughs> okay, planet X. Anyway, it's got that 36 supposedly rotation, year 3,600 year rotation. So if that's coming around 
and that bumps it, or even the gravity of it throws out a whack a little bit, we'd all be in trouble. Yeah, we'll see what happens. We'll see what happens. You know, that's another thing. Uh, if you want to see what the volcano in the Philippines looks like, you can go to our website. I have it, uh, two pictures of it. One, instead of seeing my ugly mug, you'll see the volcano. And I'm going to start doing that about once or twice a week on Earth Changes. I'm going to put it as a primary picture uh, for the show where you can kind of see what's going on. But you can go to www.nightdreamstalkradio.com. And, hey, if I don't sell my normal self, I'm losing my voice. I got a very bad sore throat here today, so I'm going to try to make it through the whole show. You know, a, a, a squirrels, we're talking about squirrels, and we talk a lot about skunks and raccoons and all that stuff, giving people a bad time, but a, a Canadian couple were being harassed by, well, squirrel. It keeps ringing, running up and ringing the doorbell. <laughs> oh, my goodness. I don't know what it is with the animal world. Maybe it's the um, the magnetic field you're talking about. But between the bears breaking in houses and drinking beers and, and squirrels breaking in houses and chewing up the house and then breaking in cars and making nests, and now, now they're getting a little pancarious where they're ringing doorbells. Oh, yeah. Well, you know, <laughs> it, it's crazy. I mean, it, it, a lot of things are going on. It doesn't make sense. But it's it's going on, and you know, again, I guess there's supposed to be a big. I haven't checked a big bomb of a rainstorm that's going to hit Australia. Oh Lord! And yeah, well, they that need it. that would be great because it would what I read would put out all the the main fires. Yeah, they they boy, if any place needs water, they sure do. Or rain. Uh, I've been reporting on it at least once or twice a week uh, of all the damages and loss of life and animals and people arrested for lighting more fires and it's just awful. Yeah, I yeah, the, oh yeah, all the fire bugs come out. You know, they, they they get a fire. You know, in some areas a little bit under control, and you got somebody that just immediately goes there and and creates one. One was a firefighter that was fighting the fires. Maybe he was oh. doing it to keep his job. I don't know. Wow, I didn't hear, I didn't read or hear that one, but yeah, that place is so dry to begin with. It doesn't take much to light a fire, then they get a lot of lightning strikes, so that right there could do it. So they sure don't need help from man lighting them either. No, that that's totally crazy. Well, a South African man is living in a barrel on top of a flagpole to try oh. to break the world's record. <laughs> Every week you always find one or two of them Guinness records, but that's one I've never heard of. Sleeping in a barrel, well, I guess you're sleeping in a barrel too, but in a barrel on top of a flagpole, that ought to be unique to see. But, uh, wow, can you imagine being up there with a 50-mile-an-hour windstorm? Yeah, well, I wouldn't want to be, you know, let alone. You know, there's been people doing that. You know, back a few years ago, there was a guy who lived in a tree up here in the Pacific Northwest. I think it was Oregon. And he was living there for like a month or so in trying to break a record. Then there was actually somebody that was just fed up with society back here maybe about 15 years ago. Again, up in Oregon. He, uh, well, climbed up a tree and then that's where he stayed and refused to come down and people had to bring him food. Yeah, I remember that story from last year. I don't remember the older one, but it must be something in the water that's making people fed up and they're hanging out in trees. <laughs> but that I would be know. something. I don't know. Firefighters help a injured pelican in Florida. Oh, wow. Well, you know, the, well, it, it seems like there's a lot of compassion, you know, for wildlife. But how about the people? I've seen pictures of people, you know, wrapped in blankets, snow on the, the you know, on the ground, like six, seven inches or even deeper. And these poor people are like on a park bench trying to stay warm, wrapped in a blanket. But nobody seems I, to be helping them. Yeah, I've seen them pictures, and it, it, that's terrible. It, and the thing is, I don't know what the problem. I know around here there's a few churches that, you know, you don't have to do that. They'll take you in. You can at least uh, find a place on the floor or somewhere where you don't have to be out in the freezing cold. But fortunately, it hasn't been, like, been very cold enough to have to resort to that. But even still, being out in, in the elements, even if it's only 50 degrees, is, is asking much, especially – because I've noticed some of them pictures, they're older people. They're not young, young uh, guys. No, a lot of them are actually war vets. You know, years ago in Tacoma, they, I got to know a guy because when I was out of radio for that 10 years, uh, one of the, I was managing a business down in Tacoma, the main part of downtown Tacoma. And there used to be this guy 
who would walk up down the street.